This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil hit a three-week high on Tuesday as China's latest easing of COVID-19 restrictions spurred hopes of a fuel demand recovery, with further support coming from cuts to U.S. energy production caused by winter storms. China will stop requiring inbound travelers to go into quarantine, starting from January 8. The National Health Commission said on Monday in a major step towards easing curbs on borders that have been largely shut since 2020. Brent crude was up 22 cents, or 0.3 percent, at $84.14 a barrel by 0911, G, M, T and U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude gained 7 cents to $79.63. Both benchmarks hit their highest since December 5 earlier in the session. India is planning a $2 billion incentive program for the green hydrogen industry, three sources told Reuters, in a bid to cut emissions and become a major export player in the field. The 180 billion rupee, $2.2 billion, incentive aims to reduce the production cost of green hydrogen by a fifth over the next five years, said a senior government official and an industry manager working in renewable energy. It would do this in part by increasing the scale of the industry, they said. The current cost in India is 300 rupees to 400 rupees per kilogram, said the manager. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Russia's budget deficit could be wider than a planned 2% of GDP in 2023 as an oil price cap squeezes export income, Finance Minister Anton Saluinov said, an extra fiscal hurdle for Moscow as it spends heavily on its military activities in Ukraine. His comments represented Moscow's clearest acknowledgement yet that the $60 per barrel cap, imposed on December 5 by the Group of Seven, European Union and Australia with the aim of limiting Russia's ability to fund the military campaign, could indeed hit state finances. Russia last week said price caps on its crude and refined products could see it cut oil output by 5% minus 7% early next year. But regardless of how deep the cuts are, Saluanov said spending commitments would be met, tapping debt markets and the country's rainy day fund as needed. Egypt has set a new international tender for oil and gas exploration rights in the Nile Delta and Mediterranean Sea, the state news agency reported on Tuesday. The tender was set for 12 blocks, split evenly between onshore and offshore, and the deadline for offers in the bid round was set for April 30, 2023, the tender announcement showed. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Shanghai base metals rose on Tuesday, with copper hitting its highest in two weeks after China decided to scrap quarantine rules for visitors, taking a major step towards further easing of its COVID containment policy. China will stop requiring inbound travelers to go into quarantine starting from January 8, moving further away from a strict, zero-COVID policy that has curbed industrial activity and domestic demand and ignited public unrest last month. The most traded February copper contract on the Shanghai Futures Exchange ended daytime trade 1% higher at 66,420 yuan, $9,547.49, a ton. Earlier in the session, it hit 66,660 yuan, its strongest since December 14. Gold prices firmed above the key $1,800 level on Tuesday as the US dollar weakened following China's decision to ease COVID curbs. Spot gold was up 0.6% at $1,808.89 per ounce by 0955 GMT. U.S. gold futures climbed 0.8% to $1,817.60. Gold is performing in line with risk assets, and further signs that King Dollar is loosening its grip on the safe haven throne is also encouraging bullion bulls to restore spot prices back above the psychological $1,800 mark said Han Tan, chief market analyst at Exinity. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural... Sugarcane crushing in Brazil soared in early December on a yearly basis, industry group Unica said on Monday, as dozens of plants continue to operate this season after being forced to halt output earlier than expected due to bad weather a year ago. 
Even so, crushing in Brazil's center-south region still missed market expectations amid increasing rainfall in the country's main cane belt. Sugarcane processing jumped more than sevenfold year-on-year to 5.61 million tons, but analysts polled by financial information provider S&P Global Commodity Insights had forecast it to reach 6.58 million tons in the period. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.